Hello, internet, and welcome to what is bound to be our most professional stream yet here on GGK. Welcome to another episode of Slang 101. I am your host and your keeper of monsters, your monster of ceremonies, and your friend who immediately forgets how to play a game after it's been like an hour and it's been two weeks since we've done this. So get ready. Uh, welcome. I'm so glad you're all here. We're here to play Monster of the Week. Um, but before we do that, um, let me tell you about what we got going on here on the channel this week. Um, I think our schedule is regular again after the holidays. Um, we have lots of shows that were just uh, showcased in our wonderful pre-roll video and every time i say it that way i get a big influx of anxiety because i'm the one that made the pre-roll video <laughs> for the channel um but it showcases all of our uh shows and the games we play here on the channel as well as we do video games stuff like that so check out our stuff if you're here with us on twitch uh, our schedule is below our faces if you're with us on youtube it is pinned to our discord which you can join it's also pinned to our twitter um we do things most days. Um, our next stream after this, or our next schedule to stream after this is going to be on Tuesday um, at 7 p.m. Eastern time. It's going to be another Tabletop Tuesdays, and I believe we're playing Masks again um, with uh, Alex at the helm. So that will be fun. Teenage superheroes and all of their teenage drama. Um, it's going to be very exciting. Uh, and yeah, we got a bunch of other fun stuff after that. We've been doing a lot of video game streams lately. Um, we're probably gonna finish Resident Evil at some point this week. Maybe. So, maybe. We'll see. Uh, probably but yeah, tomorrow. follow our Twitter and we'll tell you when we're doing stuff. Uh, that's what we're doing here. I'm gonna let these fine folk introduce themselves, starting with i don't know what order we're in anymore rob. rob rob goes first rob you go first i go first hello hi welcome to me i'm rob or bonus stage rob or bonus underscore stage underscore rob and i am playing professor couldn't remember if he was a doctor or professor they're both a lie professor He's not <laughs> uh yeah yeah, that's it. Oh, I've missed you all dearly. Hi, I'm Christina Sid. You can find me on Twitter's at the Greek Sid. Uh, I'm on there ship posting and talking about the fun stuff I do on here. Uh, let's see. Uh, what do we got going on this week? Uh, Nansel's back. Woot! Uh, but Val will talk about that. Uh, but uh, we also. Uh, uh, our New Year's Eve special went to YouTube, or is about to go to YouTube, uh, and uh, we're uh, coherent. I'm really proud. Yeah, we made sense. It was great. Uh, fun times, so check that out. Uh, today I'm playing Isabel the Mundane. Hi, I'm LB of LB Hack'em Up. You can find me at LB Hack'em Up on the Twitters and the Twitches. Uh, the next thing I'm going to be playing in is tomorrow night on uh, Indoor Adventures channel. Tuesday, I'll be streaming on my own channel, doing some uh, We Happy Few, and then I'll be back here for masks. Uh, on Wednesday, I'm not doing anything. On Thursday, I will be, I think, on Nerd Immersion's channel. I haven't heard anything to the contrary, but I haven't heard any affirmation of that as well. Um, and then on Friday, I'll be back on my channel. Lauren and I are playing a new game. I don't remember what it is, but we'll be at her place. Maybe it's Resident Evil. I don't know. I won't be here, though. I'll be there. But it'll be on my channel. I'm, I'm playing Victoria today. She's spooky. And I'm following that up. Hi, I'm Val at the Kraken's Crown on Twitter. Uh, and Twitch, uh, you can find me all over the place, here only, but all over the channel, all over the, the stuff that we're doing. Um, my full schedule's on my Twitter page. Uh, you, this week, uh, probably gonna do some, like Savannah said, probably gonna do some more Resident Evil tomorrow, uh, trying to finish up 
that stream. Um, we kind of finished Ace Attorney, uh, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, but uh, we have a special bonus chapter at the end that we need to do. So we'll we'll probably do that at some point uh, soonish. Um, and like Sid said, uh, we had our session zero for uh, Neon Souls last Friday. And uh, we'll be bring, coming in for our session one uh, this uh, of our season two uh, this uh, week. You can uh, see us playing the Cypher system. Uh, same characters. We're just converted to a new system um, to see how that might shake things up. So uh, come join us for that Friday at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Uh, and today I'm playing Hector the Divine. I was hoping you were going to talk for like 10 more seconds since I was doing something I forgot to do. It's fine. <laughs> We are good. All right, uh, those are all our friends. I already said who I am. I'm Savvy and I'm running the show. How well it's going, mm, we'll find out. Um, let us get into it and uh, play a game. So last time on Slang 101, um, after, well, in the aftermath of Sally's death, uh, we had some sad stuff. Uh, we did a little bit of a character interlude. We had some scenes between a bunch of, a bunch of our characters, um, all sort of showing back up for her will reading. Um, everyone sort of dealt with that in their own way. Um, ultimately ending in most everybody going out for drinks. Um, Professor Hinks spending a lot of time alone uh, trying to desperately figure out some way to reopen the portal that uh, your friend Rex had run headlong through um, and then had let close behind them. Making no progress uh, on that end yet, but we'll see what happens uh in the meantime in sort of the midst of of all of this we started a new mystery and met a new friend um Haley wins a uh, contact in the fang of the beast set you up with a, another hunter uh who had previously been working on her own um but perhaps She's not entirely sure she does, but perhaps might need the assistance of a team this time. So you went to the sprawling manner of a familiar face to some of you who spend time on campus, uh, your resident librarian, Mrs. Isabel Winton, um, and went from there uh you did some investigating you spoke to some of the neighbors um and professor hinks and hector in particular went to the crime scene to see what they could find um a man named edward foreman uh in his late 40s who lives down the street from miss winton had been found uh in the middle of the night dead in the middle of the street uh with no visible injuries nothing strange about him uh, except the look of terror on his face so uh, you are making plans to continue this investigation after uh, checking out the scene of the crime assuming it was a crime uh, and uh, Isabel and Victoria meeting with the widow um, of mr ed and uh, getting some information from her both from her uh, home security system and uh, through a little empathetic uh, reading on victoria's end as well uh, so uh, we'll pick back up as uh, victoria i think wanted to before we move on try to regroup and make a plan Yes. So. so I think Victoria like has a brief text conversation with Wynn about like the group and like what 
what they're going to do because she's never worked with any of them. Uh, and uh, and then she's going to send a text to the three others that are working at this case and just say, um, hey, y'all want to get together and, and have a conversation? Um, I know we haven't worked together very long or very much at all. Uh, and I think we should probably like get to know each other first before we jump into, you know, maybe murdering some creature or something. Who's this again? I don't have your number in my phone. It's Victoria, the the small one. Right. Yes. I'm the cheerleader. Remember, we see each other at least once a week. Yes. Hanks and I are working on something, but we can meet you as soon as possible. Right. Where should we meet? That's a good question. Why don't we just meet at my place? Okay. Where's that? I will send you a a text with the address. Um, what are y'all doing again? If it uh, if it uncomplicates the matter a little bit, um, you and Isabel are back at her house. Oh, and true. Hector and uh, and Hinks are still in the neighborhood. They're just yeah, down we're the down the street. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, just just come back to the house when y'all are done. Whose house? The the mansion we were just at. Oh, right. Yes. We will meet you there. All right. Try not to get caught doing whatever it is you're doing. Mm-hmm. Are you still on the gram over there? Are you actually talking to somebody? No, I'm, I'm, I just sent you a message, too. It's, I, I made a group chat for all of us. Oh, is that what that was? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I'm right here. Right, but I just wanted you to have the information as well so that it could be referenced later if needed. Right. This is why I have publicists. All right, well, fine. Um, when are they going to be here? Do we have time for another glass of sangria? I think we do. <laughs> Wonderful. They get more sangria. All right, you have some more sangria. Wait for uh, Hector and Hinks to arrive. Um, the two of you, is there anything else you would like to do before leaving the... I'm just going to keep calling it a crime scene because it's the easiest thing for me to call it. Am I remembering right that Hinks did something when we were here last time to like investigate the scene for like traces of... Yes. Okay. He did. Um, you had some some sort of uh, rigged up EMF contraption uh, and found uh, not sort of active active ghost traces uh, but uh, sort of like residual energy in the area. Hmm. Do you still want to look at the body? Yes. Any evidence that wasn't able to be sampled from the scene of the crime would likely be present on the deceased. Well, I was going to just suggest that we get, because I don't have a car and you don't have your van with you. I was going to suggest that we get an Uber, uh, but if they want us to come back to the house, maybe one of them can give us a ride. I, I I would very much like to skip a social hour in the favor of actual work, but sure, that seems frugal. I, I think it'll be fun. We, we should get to know these new people better. It makes no difference to me. Let's go, Doc. Come on. Slaps him on the back. Okay. So we come we come back to the house before we head to our crime.
cried. You come back to the house, and as the uh... and he said it, but he was already at the after party. <laughs> can you believe it? <laughs> Why the embarrassment? You can imagine. Oh, hello. <laughs> and hello. the B team is together <laughs> once again. So, Victoria said that she wanted us to come back to yeah. discuss something. Right. Well, I mean, with everyone else in this sort of hunting party thing, we kind of have a rapport um, since there are some... Well, since you're all new to me and I'm new to all you, um, I thought it'd be good for us to sort of go around and, you know, get to know each other that way. You know, we can know what everyone's strengths are and all that. Like an icebreaker. Exactly. Sounds like fun. All right. Um, well, I guess how we do it in cheer is go around, say your name. We don't really have to worry about majors. Um, maybe just do a little bit about your personal life. Um, you know, what you do outside of this. Um uh what your skills are for this whole hunting thing and um what's your favorite color isabel do you want to start of course uh isabel winton i'm a gemini that matters um what i like to do outside of this hunting business um mm -hmm. uh, well i'm a writer Oh, I mean, I keep my lovely day job over at the library. Um, my strengths during sort of the yeah, hunting, as yeah. it were. Um, well, I'm very good at research, obviously. I know my way around a book or two. Um, I'm fairly well-versed in uh, getting information out of people when I need to. I've got a number of connections, as you can imagine. And, um... Well, I do throw quite a shindig, so it's really nice to, you know, relax afterwards. So uh, I feel like I'm uh, quite a bit of a morale booster as well. Perfect. And what was your favorite color? Oh, purple. <laughs> Most definitely purple. Mm. Um, professor? Uh, yes. Um, professor Jeffrey Hinks. Um, academic. Uh specialize in engineering and um general applied sciences and the study of mythological and supernatural creatures um, or beings looking at hector thank you um i suppose green is a nice color all right and um you hector right yes Hector. The professor did not say what he likes to do outside of his hunting town. Oh, oh that God, is true. Sorry. Oh, what no, did I you? did. Um, did a, researching and applied science, and that that was all-encompassing. Oh. You, so you would say that your life is your work, and vice versa? I suppose that is accurate, yes. You know what they say, if you do what you love, you never work a day in your life. That is a complete and utter lie. It just becomes work, but it's a nice saying nonetheless. Um, oh. We really do need to get you out a little more there, Professor. Sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. Uh, yes, no trouble. Uh, my name is Hector. Um, I am a uh, trainer for the OSU football team. Uh, go Ospreys. Uh, go Ospreys. I, I've been living in... Uh, Cedar Grove for um, uh, about a year now. Uh, Closer to 18 months since they announced you coming in, but who's counting? I believe that's correct. That's a good memory you have there. Are you a fan of the football team? I'm a fan of knowing what's going on around me, that's for sure. Right. So, uh... Outside of hunting, uh, I I'm 
currently uh, looking for an apartment with my girlfriend. Uh, we're moving in together. Um, and, really? uh, and yes. who is the lucky Oh, um, I, I prefer to keep my personal life separate from the, the hunting, but- Of uh, course. Well, if you need any recommendations on, uh, are you planning on renting, buying? We're looking for a townhouse, an apartment, duplex uh, ha perhaps. I haven't gotten that far in the process yet, but I will let you know. Uh, she like reaches into her little purse. Oh, well, if you need any recommendations, I know several realtors in the area. Hey, y'all, just tell them Missy sent you. Uh, takes the card. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and then as far as hunting goes, I am, as I've told all of you, I think at this point, I am a Nephilim. Uh, my mother is Aphrodite. Uh, and um, I'm about 50 years old or so. Uh, oh, my favorite color, color is gold. Wonderful. Um, I'm Victoria Keener. I'm a cheerleader on the OSU uh, varsity cheer squad. Go Ospreys. Go Ospreys. Uh, um, I am a flyer, which means that I'm the one that they toss up in the air. I also do acrobatics on the ground, tumbles and such. Um, I can't actually fly, if that's your question. Oh. Uh, no. I, right. I understand how that works. Right. Um, and, uh, let's see. Uh, I, uh, I have visions. Um, I can see into the future sometimes. Uh, absolutely. That, well, mm -hmm. they are triggered at random, so it's not something that I can just do offhand. Um, I am also a psychic, so I can read people's minds and uh emotions so that's usually how i function in the group um and my favorite color is pink well that was just lovely oh so you're on the cheerleading team the squad yep that is what right. i said okay I, so you're that victoria okay all right no, lots coming I, uh, the the players talk a lot in the locker room, and they've mentioned a few of them have mentioned a Victoria uh, in passing. Uh, I don't what know are if they it's saying? The same. What are they saying? I shouldn't say in mixed company. Leans over to her. Is any of what they're saying true? Oh, I'm sure most of it is. Huh. Good to know. I don't engage in rumors. It's only things that I've overheard. Mm-hmm. Engaging in rumors is half the fun. <laughs> well, um, does anyone have any questions for anyone? Uh, what is your lineage? My lineage? What do you mean? Uh, yes, I, I, Hector here is a half angel, is fairly accurate. So what, how, how does the psychic aspect work? Well, it's um, it is a hereditary thing. It comes down. To each one of my family members has it um, in some capacity. Some are uh, some are, some can move things with their mind. Some can start fires. Some can read emotions, and some can manipulate others into doing what they want. Yeah, you haven't come for the Mediterranean at all. At least si yeah, sirens places. was where I was going. No, I, I'm I'm pretty sure we're all human, but yeah, we we're all from uh, well, I mean, we hail from Italy. That does make a hell of a lot of sense. You just you hear a lot about that mythology and mm. that sort of thing. Yeah, we weave hmm. our uh, most of our stuff comes from the fates, or at least that's what I'm told. I've never actually met them or interacted with them or anything, but. They're kind of know-it-alls. Right. You've met the fights? Uh, not personally. I've only heard from what my mother has said. Really? Are you still in good touch with your mother? Oh, yes. We, uh, we talk every year. I'm sure we'd all love to meet her. Yeah, does she, like, live on Earth? 
Define Earth. Like the floating ball of rock that we're standing on. Kind of. Could we, as mere mortals, <laughs> most of us anyway, actually physically go to say hello to her and have some tea? Maybe. There's a small chance you might spontaneously combust, but... I'm sure we could work something out if you really wanted to meet her. Maybe she should come to us then. <laughs> hmm. All right. Well, I'm glad that we had this time to talk to each other and 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 yeah. So, uh usually with the other group, someone's kind of calling the shots. Uh do we That hasn't want... been my experience so far. No. Everyone sort oh, of just does Oh, really? If someone needs to take this in hand, being the oldest one here, might as well be me. Well, so, Miss Vicky and I, we went ahead and talked to uh, Miss Junie, who is the, the widow of uh, whole dead Ed. Um, got a little bit of information, but we thought it would be best to maybe uh, gather all of the uh, the neighborhood together and get a little more info. Like I said, it's one of my strong suits. All elbowed in the chair. <laughs> Um, but that might take a day or two. I mean, I can get my event planner. She's a doll, but she needs at least 24 hours to put something like this together. Um, however, uh, weren't you gentlemen going to go and, I don't know, sneak peek at that damn there body? Yes, that is the plan. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a vehicle. Uh, could we borrow someone's car? Hmm. Uh, I drove here with, um with Abby and Wynn, and they left. Let me just make sure Simon's here. Simon! Oh, he's probably near the end of the house. Uh, she'll take her phone out of her purse and, like, go ahead and do one of the little finger-pecking text situations on her phone. Oh, he's my driver, but he lives on the other end of the house, so I don't know if he heard me or not. Um... But yes, you know, we're welcome to take one of my cars. Wonderful. So they'll go to the morgue. And what are we going to do? Research? That's not really my specialty. I'm not very good at the books. I would say we don't really know what we're looking at right now. But I mean, you're welcome to help me put together this little shindig and uh, make sure we invite the appropriate people. Sure. I'll, uh, if I have any questions, I'll ask, uh, when he used to plan the fraternity events. Right. I'll go ahead and let the professionals take care of this one. Then. Right. No, I, that, that's fine. I was going to go look around and see if I could find a good spot to take a picture in here, if that's still something I can do. 13th stay from the top, but you might want to wait about 20 to 30 minutes for the natural light to be just perfect. Noted. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Well, boys? I'm sorry. I, I zoned out for a second. What was the plan? <laughs> uh, her driver will be taking us. Uh, about this time, a uh, very professional-looking uh, young man in a suit and a driving cap uh, makes his way into the room. There he is, Simon. Simon, he's some of my friends. Uh, this is uh, Victoria, it's Hector, and uh, the professor. <laughs> oh, we're on Gilligan's Island now. <laughs> oh, I love it. Yeah, never mind, youngins. Um... Would you mind taking both these two gentlemen wherever they need to go? Um, damn, I think a lot of this in the shop. Eh, just take the coronet if you don't mind. <laughs> Y'all don't mind something a little older. <laughs> Not at all. Uh, gentlemen, if you'll follow me. Right. Oh, and Simon, your mother did call. You do need to call her back. Yes, ma'am. He awkwardly leaves the room. <laughs> He's uh, actually yeah. my nephew, but, you know. 
I was gonna say he's kind of cute. Oh, he's available, darling, if you're interested. Obviously, very, very well um, situated in the job market, but my side. No, I'm, I have a boyfriend. Wynn is my boyfriend. Oh. Tell me, does that get a little complicated? In what way? Well, working together and working together, if you know what I mean. <laughs> well, I can read his mind anytime I want, so it doesn't get more complicated than that. Oh. Oh. By the way, oh. I have some stories that I can tell you that you might be able to work into your next book. Grabs like a little pen and paper. I have so many questions here. Uh, bye bye, gentlemen. So, uh, <laughs> that wasn't hey. too painful. No, fairly informative. I am curious about the young one's abilities. The, uh, uh oh, Victoria, the, the psychic part. Yes. I mean, if we're talking about a predictive algorithm, that's one thing. But if we're talking about actual mythological lineage dating back to... Oh, I don't know. I'm still dead set on sirens on this one, but I'm sure I'll suss it out. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. After you. All right. Uh, you to hop in the car, uh, Simon at the wheel. And uh, he sort of turns back once everything is set up. Uh, so, where are we going? I believe the county uh, coroner's office. Right. Okay. Yeah. Turns on the radio and takes off. Doesn't ask a lot of questions. Uh, and uh, drives you downtown toward the county coroner's office um anything you want to do on the way otherwise you're going to fast travel it fast travel's good okay you're there uh these you loading there. times are amazing <laughs> easy enough uh you arrive outside the uh the county coroner's office downtown uh and uh, simon sort of pulls up outside and says uh so should i should i wait Yes, I think so. We shouldn't be long. Uh, should probably keep the engine running, too, just in case. All right. I'll, I'll be nearby. He lets you out, uh, sort of circles once, and then pulls into a, a, a very nearby parking spot. And here you are. What would you like to do? So, Professor, have you done something like this before? Uh, examined a cadaver? Uh, mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Uh, so there should be a window around back. It's usually what I use to look inside, and I can just sort of get in there right away. I've had to do this a couple of times for cases because they're not very big about me just walking in and asking to see the body up front. Um, I tried that the first time. It didn't go well. Uh, so what I did the last couple times is I went around back, I popped inside, looked it over, and then came back out. Um, I don't think they saw me the last time. Uh, there was some yelling as I was leaving. Uh, but I think that's because I forgot to put the body away. Um, however, I can't really do that with you, because there's a chance that I may lose you, like I did uh, the other day. Um, and then you'll be dropped in sort of a quantum state somewhere. I see. Hmm. Oh, very well. I suppose I can find a place to break in. Or I could, um, I guess if I got inside, I could open the door from you from the inside. That also works. Less fun, but it also works. But if you want to break in, that's I don't want to ruin your work. No, no, no. That's far more efficient. <laughs> it 
Sveta has a look. <laughs> this is my thinking face. Uh, okay, what's what's the plan? So uh, y'all do so much crime. Yeah, you're doing so much crime. Hector Hard doesn't see this as the not breaky any guy, <laughs> but I'm also <laughs> just breaking into places, so I'm starting to think it's me or the system. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that Hanks has broken into as many places as Travis did at this point, and he's been here for like two days. Uh, I like it. Okay, so Hector, tell me what you're doing. So Hector, I'm I'm flavoring an RP, but you're free to veto how this works. That Hector has had to do this oh, a couple of times, hunting Thanks. in the back. Uh, I was just ass I was assuming that Hector has had to do this a couple of times when hunting things. Um, mm -hmm. So I was thinking Hector pops into the coroner's office and opens the door from the inside, uh, okay. like a number, like a like a door around back. Uh, there's probably like a like a back entrance where they wheel in the uh, the bodies and stuff from the yeah sure ambulances and things like that. Okay. Um, yeah, so you make your way casually, as casually as you can, uh, around the side of the building to the back, uh, find a familiar window. Uh, what, what room are you usually teleporting into when you do this? Where do you imagine yourself going? Uh... I was because the morgue doesn't have windows, probably. No, that would I would assume that's probably in like the basement or something. Yeah. Um, I'm assuming there's some sort of like administrative office or something. Uh, that's. Uh, Stacy was fired a few months back, and and they haven't filled her her position yet, so her office is still empty and that sort of situation. Okay. All right. Uh, so you make your way around the uh, the side towards one of the small offices in the back. Um, look in the window. The uh, it looks a little bit different than it last did. Um, most of the stuff has been moved out of it. Um, there are a few like boxes sitting around the edge um, of the room. A couple of things you don't recognize. Maybe Stacy's finally been replaced. Um, but you don't see anybody inside. Um, so you with a flap of wings uh, teleport in landing <clears throat> in the center of the room just sort of walks out of the office tries to look like he belongs heads to the back doors to open them for hinks okay uh you do so. Um, you head down the hallway to uh, to sort of an open room in the back. You know, has uh, an elevator and such in it, um, so they can sort of bring in bodies, take them into this large elevator, take them down to the basement to where the morgue is. Um, you open this back door, let Hinks inside, reunited, and the two of you head downstairs. Yes. All right, uh, so you head downstairs toward uh, Hector, where you know the morgue to be. Um, it's quiet down here. Um, there are a, a couple of different rooms, a couple of storage rooms, that kind of thing. Um, and then sort of one large, obviously, examination area, uh, which you're familiar with, the classic uh, wall of drawers. Um as you open the door to the actual morgue, um, you see someone inside. <clears throat> Working. Uh, and as they hear the door open, um, this uh, woman who is in the room, sort of on one side of the room, kind of putting some files away and closing up a drawer um, says, what now? And then turns around and sees you. Uh, Hector, you recognize her <laughs> because she's kicked you out of here before. <laughs> uh, this is uh, sort of a, a younger woman, probably early 30s, 
Um, she's worked here for a couple of years. She has sort of like tan skin, dark hair. Her name is Grace. Um, and she is the assistant to the coroner. Um, and she just looks at you and she goes, no. Oh, hi, uh-uh. Grace. Uh-uh. No. Get out. Not uh, again. No, it's it's a misunderstanding. I, I'm supposed to be here. Uh, You're absolutely time. not supposed to be here. No, they they let me in upstairs. I I promise. Uh, we, There's we're... no way that's true. Well, Hector. Yes. Last time you left a drawer halfway open, and the poor man's foot rotted off. Uh, that I don't think that was me. Uh, that doesn't that doesn't sound like. Now. Now, please, Grace. I'm I'm asking you just there's for just one favor. We we just need to to look at at, at one body uh, very quickly. It'll only take a minute. But my my friend here is actually a doctor. Uh, Hector, if I cover for you again, I am gonna lose my damn job. Um, I'd like to use one of my new abilities. Okay. Uh, which is soothe. Okay. Uh, when you talk to someone for a few seconds in a quiet voice, which I'm going to try very hard to keep doing, uh, you can calm them down, blocking any panic, a- panic, anger, or other negative emotions they have. This works even if the thing that freaked them out is still present, as long as your voice can be heard. Okay. Do you have to roll for this? No. You can just do this. Yeah, I can just do this. Hector? Listen. I like you. You're a nice guy, okay? Uh, but if Miss Hendricks finds out that you are here again I know, on my watch, I, I, I will know. lose my job. It, and I like working here, despite what most people might say about it. And and Grace, we're we're going to be as quick as we can. Uh, is is Miss Hendricks on lunch? We'll, we'll we'll be back before she even gets back here. Um, my my friend Doctor Hinks is going to needs to inspect a body for a friend of ours. Uh, who's very concerned that the circumstances of the death uh, were uh, were not as they were initially reported, uh, and we just want to give her some some peace of of mind, really. Uh, so if you would just let my friend here examine the body for just five minutes, uh, we'll we'll be out of here uh, as soon as possible. <laughs> Why can't you just like fill out the paperwork? You know I don't like filling out paperwork. It's it's. I, yeah, well, Hector, I don't like talking about the anxiety you caused me to my therapist. But here we go. Last time I did right. the paperwork, they didn't. It, it took four months, and then by then the body had already been disposed of, and and I didn't even have a chance to to do what I had filed the paperwork to do. You know that it moves too slowly. I doubt anyone even took my request seriously. I'm just trying to help people. No, because you keep breaking into the morgue. Who, I'm sorry. Who is who is this? Uh, this is Dr. Hicks. Jeffrey Hinks, uh, we were hired by the somebody close to the victim somewhat of a private investigation outside of the slow moving wheels of the justice system and you're a doctor yes fine fine you've got about 15 minutes and then we're gonna have to put everything away because Ms. Hendrix is gonna be coming back and I really do not want to be on the bad end of her again um i understand who are you looking for uh i've just been calling him dead ed what was the actual name of the <laughs> it's ed but i don't remember the last name ed foreman you ed mean, foreman y- y'all are looking for mr foreman mr foreman yes, yes. Yeah. he just came in early this morning so i figured He's over here. Uh, I can pull out his personal effects as well. Um, and she walks over to 
uh, one of the drawers, kind of looks over the labels for a second, unlocks it, and uh, pulls one of the morgue drawers out, uh, revealing a form covered in a white sheet. All right. Go nuts. I'll get the stuff that came in with him. And she goes over to a, a sort of a large filing cabinet and starts looking through, sort of pulling out plastic bags of things. And you uh, take a look at the body. Um, you can pull the sheet back. Um, you see a, uh, a white man, late 40s, uh, sort of graying, salt and pepper hair. Um, just relatively nondescript. Um, he looks like the kind of person that would live in Isabel's neighborhood. Um, he, uh, you look him over, and as far as you can tell, sort of at a cursory glance, he doesn't seem to have any injuries, um, anything like that. No puncture wounds, no scratch marks, no bullet holes, things like that. Um, but his face is sort of all contorted. Um, his mouth is sort of like frozen, like hanging open. Um, his eyes are wide and sort of uh, screwed up in this like in this look of shock and like fear. Well, that's horrifying. Um, mm -hmm. And Hanks will just start. The first thing he would do is using the same type of device he tried to scan the crime scene with which i i don't know if it was ever determined what i don't think i got a good enough reading to determine what type of thing we were dealing with um would i be able to use my science to sort of i guess scan the body for any um I guess, like, epicenters of, like, some sort of magic. Like, point of contact, I guess. That's yeah. what I'm looking for. Yeah, you can. Um, I'm gonna have you roll. Da, 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 da. Uh, let's just roll to investigate. Okay. Um, and I'm just gonna get a sharp, uh, and then we'll see what you find i'm such a good investigator what you got a 14 <laughs> i maxed it <laughs> jesus <laughs> you did double sixes all right uh yeah so uh on that yeah you take out your um your device and start to run it over again um and get some stronger readings uh this time around they're still there's still sort of, uh, it's not like there is anything like sort of active, actively paranormal uh, within the body, but do you do get some stronger sort of residual readings, um, which you could then use to compare to other things. Um, they mm -hmm. match pretty much exactly what you found uh, when you were investigating the street and the scene of where this happened um and as you sort of run the uh the device kind of over his body um you find two sort of centers where the i don't really know if signal is the right word but the readings that you're that you're getting are the strongest. essentially like like an entry wound the equivalent of an yeah. entry wound is what yeah. i'm looking for but like for magic Okay. Yeah, you get um you get two sort of spikes, uh -huh. I guess, um uh in, in your readings and what you're looking for. And one of them is sort of right over his heart. Um and then the other um you kind of find as you run it over the top of his head. Well to put it simply, um the energy was focused mostly on the heart and the mind. Meaning, presumably, he. <laughs> my first guess is he literally got scared to death. Um, I'll need to see if there's any physical symptoms that would have caused this 
uh, his body to shut down because I simply refused to think that a man scared himself so much that he died. But, hmm. Hmm. and I think that if, well, I say if it's okay if he starts actually conducting an autopsy, I don't think Hinks would give a shit. <laughs> um, unless he stopped, he is going to attempt to perform an autopsy. Can can Hector just be over with Grace as she's getting out all like the the personal effects and it's just like, um, oh if you don't like look in the other direction oh if you don't mind I'll I'll, I'll look over some of those just to see if there's any evidence there just as in the background you start to hear the <laughs> of the of the saw uh, I... trying to keep her calm. Hanks, <laughs> you start this. You start to do this. Um, and, uh, hearing the, the sounds of the tools sort of rev up, up, I think Grace, uh, sort of from over one of the cabinets sort of stands up very straight and it starts to turn and it stops. Hector, what is he doing? Like I said, he's a doctor. He's examining the body. Um, it's Hector? part of his training. Yes. Hector, is he cutting Mr. Foreman open? <laughs> uh, yes, I believe so. It, part of our investigation. Hector, this is not the kind of thing I can explain away. Can't you say that you just started the autopsy? I mean, isn't that part of your oh. job? No. <laughs> no, I can't. Right. Um, Dr. Hinks. Yes. I don't know if we should be starting the autopsy without the coroner. Why? Um, I'm not entirely sure, actually. Uh, is that so? That that's that is a problem, though, right, Grace? Um, well, for one, it's illegal. Um, and for two, it does kind of go directly against the chain of command and the entire system that I work for. And for three, it's something that I can't explain away and I will have to try to explain it and I'll lose my job. Hmm. Plus, I don't think he has time to do a full autopsy anyway. She's probably going to be back in about 10 minutes. Right. Hinks, we should probably stop. Very well. I'm still no closer to figuring this out, however. Um, when do you presume these findings will be available? Uh, you mean the report? Yes. Is, is the autopsy scheduled for today? Yeah. Um... Generally, those kind of things aren't public record. I mean, y'all you... are welcome to say and try to convince the coroner to let you in on it, but... Listen, I'm trying really, really hard to stay calm. Right. About this whole thing. Yes. Um, well, how about, uh... Hinks, would you would you like to wait until the coroner gets back and we can speak with her, or uh, do you have enough information? I don't have enough information other than yes, this is the same reading that I was getting at the scene of the crime. Hmm. I can point the coroner in the right direction if they'll hear me out, but I imagine that'll go against the chain of command or whatever it is. How about this? I'll talk to Miss Hendricks when she gets back, and we'll see if we can convince her to let you stay. Okay. Okay. 
Is it too much to ask that y'all just like tie me up in a closet and I'll pretend like I was a hostage throughout this whole thing? I mean, if that goes against your chain of command, we can absolutely do that. I can abscond with the body. I have more tools at my disposal back at the um, Winnebago. That's really not what I meant. Maybe this got a little bit out of hand. You know what? Why don't I just go see if uh, Miss Hendricks is back from lunch? Yes. And maybe I'll take her this whole stack of paperwork I need her to sign before she gets back to work. Mm, that sounds like a good idea. You owe me. Yes. Thank you, Grace. She takes a deep breath, picks up a big stack of papers, and walks out of the room. Hector Not wanting to be the, part of this. Hector locks the doors after she leaves. Okay, you should hurry. Fair enough. And uh, he just goes right back to what he was doing. Um, whilst he's operating um he just says chains of command ridiculous they're suggestions laws a chain of command is a suggestion just like an expiration date or a traffic light you should follow it however if you don't it should not be a illegal it shouldn't be a, a, a chargeable offense it's it's ridiculous all while he is just going at cutting this guy's chest open this is why nothing gets done in the government frankly chains of command ridiculous hector starts to say things but can't think of anything to really say to this so just starts going through the personal effects of mr ed okay uh, <laughs> oh boy. Uh, okay. Uh, Professor Hinks, how good of a job do you do? Um, I'm not, when I'm not when, gonna have you roll for this, so you tell me how good of a job you I'd, do. Best, I'd man. love to. So when I said I have uh, examined cadavers before, um, Hinks is well read on human anatomy, but the only thing he has ever dissected is probably some sort of like various animals. Um, never a human body. He knows where the heart is. I mean, he he studied anatomy. Um, as far as application goes, he's definitely not a professional. The 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 totally perfect like v cut thing that they do with autopsies is probably a little rough okay so i you know you know where you're going yeah you know what you're trying to get to hearts are in this general area it's just the getting in there <laughs> yeah that's not a okay okay um like most of my life really uh, is, is hanks an allegory for my life maybe I, I know the destination it's really the journey yeah it's the journey that, that is I'm probably on. gonna spill a little more blood than i would like well when you put it like that now i'm probably on another watch list <laughs> i imagine there's a moment Welcome where hanks is like struggling to like like get the the last couple bones of the rib cage to open so hector just comes up and just like helps him break it yeah uh, yeah probably okay. just like, oh i've got turns it. out this was a good team to send uh so yeah hinks tools you employ hector's <laughs> we've killed sid sid's dead um you uh with the tools make your way into this man's chest um and abdomen um hector helping with some of the uh more difficult <laughs> removals of just making your way into this man's chest of the nbd of, you know um just another day 
this is not the first time that y'all have broken into the morgue. I think it is the first time I've had to be like, how do I talk about y'all doing a bad job at an autopsy you're not supposed to be doing? Um, Hector, you snapped the man's ribs open very easily. And um, you get a good look inside. Um, so I imagine that once you're in, Hanks, you know what you're looking at. You mm -hmm. know what it's you know what it's supposed to look like. Um, yeah. And would at least for the most part be able to notice anything like majorly that was wrong or in the wrong place or anything like that. Yeah. Um, as far as you can tell on first glance, um, aside from, you know, the pieces that have had to be moved, um, you, at first glance, everything looks like it's in the right place. Everything seems pretty normal. Um, you don't see, at least outwardly, any signs of like, like a heart attack or like a blockage or something like that that could have caused something like this. Um, uh, but you get in a little closer and you notice, uh, sort of, to one side of this man's heart, there is. It looks like something. It almost looks like a like a burn, like a burned spot. Um, and you, you take a closer look and it looks like a, uh, almost like something has been like branded into it. Um, and it is in the shape. It's sort of like a, a round shape, um, with a, a kind of like scalloped pattern. Um, and you look closer and it looks like a flower. Hector summons his phone and takes a picture of it. That is definitely unusual. Takes a few more pictures. Yeah, I haven't seen that before. I feel as though I have crossed a line here. Is there any way this gets back to your friend here and she finds herself arrested I don't know I'm not an so expert can I the cut the system. heart out or I would say we should probably leave everything here uh, I took a photo I think the image is probably more important than the heart itself would you agree I for running tests maybe not but I think as far as evidence goes um well worst case scenario if we can't get anywhere with the picture itself i'll come back here tonight and get the body that works okay uh <laughs> savannah i was wrong about something that we were talking about earlier and so i want to okay. know your ruling on something so i okay. did have another improvement that i had not uh, put into my thing. Okay. Uh, so, could I heal a dead body? To seal this, this thing back up. What's the move? Lay on hands. You touch, your touch can heal any injury or disease. When you lay your hands on someone hurt, which I'd say he's very hurt. <laughs> Roll cool. The only downside here is that if on a bad roll, it uh, the the harm comes on to you instead. So I don't know if that would just full on like chest burster, or Hector, or if it would just be some sort of lesser extent of it. Okay. Again, you can do it. Okay. The worst I this I'm ruling this across the board because more than one of you has this ability now. Hasn't uh -huh. come up that much. The worse the injury you're trying to heal, if you fuck it up, the worse it's going to be for you. I'm fully ready to spend a luck point to make this work because I feel very bad for Grace. Okay. Uh, I'm saying yes. I will Because roll. eventually, one of you going to fuck it up. <laughs> uh, I will roll. Okay, so that's a seven, okay. um, which 
would be you can heal the harm or illness, but you take it on into yourself. I'm gonna spend a luck just to make it a ten. <laughs> Okay. I don't, I don't, I have full luck points with Hector, and I feel so bad for Grace right now, and I would love to be able to come back here someday. Ruin the life of this wonderful NPC I created, purely off the top of my head to make your lives more difficult. Uh, what is your luck move? Uh, when you spend luck, but uh, you get word from your mission, uh, your mission requires you, requires something difficult to be done by you, Urgent. Word, your mission requires something. There are so many typos in this sentence that there I can't read. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You get word, your mission requires something difficult to be done. <laughs> yeah. To be done by you urgently. Okay. Uh, Hector. Mm -hmm. Okay. You decide not to cut this dead man's heart out i assume is where we landed on that that's what hector was advocating for okay i just want to make sure um you uh knowing you are running out of time um and oh you were also going through remind me in a effects. minute because you were yeah. going through his personal effects um knowing you're running out of time we'll put that in the time break you uh time reach break. down after hinks has uh, backed off a little bit and put your hands on the mangled body of um, Mr. Ed Foreman and uh, Hinks you watch as this sort of golden uh, glow starts to emanate from Hector's hands and sort of into the um, the mess in front of you <laughs> um, Hinks yeah. quickly fumbles to take the um, <clears throat> his little like EMF looking device thingy uh, and and he'd like to scan the lay on hands as it's happening Okay. essentially effectively like registering Nephilim magic into this thing oh get a reading okay I love that yeah, yes you can like, absolutely I don't know why I didn't think of this you can absolutely do that. So Hinks pulls out the, the, the rigged EMF and is scanning you. Um, and you see all of the uh, the bones start to uh, move back into place. The ones that have been sort of taken off start to reform. This thing's like um, my Pokedex. And, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it really is. And uh, go back into place. Um, and once everything is sort of back in its place where it should be, like... Uh, picture perfect out of a textbook um, the flesh sort of free folds and starts to knit itself back together and it's like it never happened very impressive Hector had just like casually put a hand on him was like checking his phone as he did it uh, to look at the to look at the pictures and then oh oh okay uh, we're good let's go thank you no, oh, thank you. Hmm. It doesn't usually work so well on living people. I. So does it reconfigure molecules? Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay, we should go. Fair enough. Uh, as you get ready to go, um. Page. Uh, Hector, as you are looking at your phone, uh, it starts to ring. This is Hector. Uh, <laughs> you answer it. Um, it's it's not a number you recognize. In fact, it's not a number at all uh, on the phone. The screen of your phone uh, just kind of starts to glow. Um, this like golden color that it doesn't usually uh, and then showing up on like the icon where like you know like where you can put like a picture of someone like next to their phone it's just just a little pink heart oh. Do we, does Hector know who this is yeah oh. hi mom this is sort of a bad time a bad time uh yes I'm a little busy 
Uh, I wasn't expecting you to call this month. Uh, what? What's up? What are you up to? I heard that from here. Right. I was putting a body back together. An important body? Yes. Hector. Yes. Are you in trouble? No. No. Working on a case. Working on a case? You haven't finished the last one you were working on. Yeah. Which one was that? Have you found this other Nephilim? Oh, right. Um, no. I haven't yet. Uh, the, what do you uh, mean, no? You're taking on other cases and not finishing these. Well, I... I was looking into it. We were, we were tracking them down, and then this masked guy showed up and sort of screwed the whole thing up. Hector... I told you this is important to me. I know, Mom. Um, I'll start working on it as soon as I'm done with this case. Now. I'll do it now. Don't make me come down there. No, that wouldn't be good. Um, I like this town. Uh, we should... No, I'll, I'll work on it right away. I promise. Okay. I love you. Love you too. Goodbye. Bye. When you say mom. Yes, that mom. She's threatening to stop by for a visit if I don't do the chores that she gave me. Oh, fantastic. Not good, no. Not fantastic. No, uh, well, uh, being of pure celestial energy in mm. an area populated by living creatures usually doesn't mm -hmm. go well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And why is that? Well, there are varying effects. Um, mass hysteria, spontaneous combustion, combustion, mentioned that one before. Uh, plus my mom has this effect on people and sometimes they just break out into mass orgies until they die so that is horrifying mm. it's messy yes mm. so don't want that to happen right we should go though before we get caught here because I'm also scared of that Yes. Uh, wait. Hmm. Okay. Has nobody made contact with Aphrodite and, and survived perhaps some sort of a flame resistant? Um, a few people have. Um, my father, for one. Um, ah, yes, that makes sense. You. It takes people well, sort of of heroic natures to withstand that sort of... I don't really know what it is. Uh, oh, but then I have nothing to fear. Fantastic. Well, we'll put a pin in that. Right. Okay. Okay. Did I check the Did I check the stuff too? Was you there anything did. In there? I just got so caught up in the autopsy that I forgot you were doing that. Um, yeah, we'll rewind very quickly back to that. So you had gone through. Um, there's essentially a um, a couple of bags with all of the stuff that Ed had come in with. Um, in one of them, sort of folded up, is uh, a set of clothes. Um, the clothes that he was wearing at the time of death. Um, very nice set of why are you know, get out of full screen um a very nice set of clothes uh, a uh, a white sort of pressed button down shirt um white undershirt very nice pair of slacks leather belt leather shoes um sort of business attire 
Um, there is uh, the usual stuff, a cell phone, a wallet, um, with, you know, driver's license, address checks out, all of that stuff. Um, and then sort of tucked into, as you go through his things, sort of tucked into, uh, his shirt pocket, um, is, uh, sort of the last remains of, like, a wilting flower. Does it look anything like the flower that was tattooed into his heart? Sort of. Um, yeah, you pull it out. It is, um, it's pretty large. It's probably, like, palm-sized. Um, mm -hmm. regular palm-sized, not Hector palm-sized. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, in his round, I don't, I don't know how much Hector knows about flowers, but it's just like a light, like mauve color, um, a sort of large round bud. But again, that like scalloped, uh, lots of petals, sort of circling in on themselves. This probably isn't a coincidence. What um, do, is it like any specific kind of flower? Yeah, that how much do y'all know about flowers? Hector would have only known about the ones that he would have seen growing up in a brothel, probably. Outside of that. So roses. It's not a rose. Uh, other, like, good-smelling flowers. I don't know how much Hanks would know about, like, botany. I don't think much like maybe a little bit more than the average person but probably not by much like maybe i don't know like you were a boy scout and did a merit badge on it like knowledge like maybe a vague okay. knowledge of hey that's this xyz flower yeah but i'll I'll, I, I'll give you this because it's not I, like I mean, it's not like a wildly exotic <laughs> yeah if, if it's not like super exotic i was gonna say if it's like from another country he might not know it but like no I, I you've seen these before i mean hector you've probably seen these before i just don't know that you know what they are uh, many people have them growing on on bushes around their houses um it's a carnation uh, okay oh hmm. we should take this with us Yes. Uh, see I see if I, I doubt hmm. it would be pressing to the police investigation. Uh, uh, no, of course not. Please, um, they would overlook anything that's not clearly written out. Needs a more um, scientific, learned mind. I'll send this to um, Hell Portal. Uh, I'll see what I can dig up on carnations and mythological supernatural I'll figure something out okay well back to the car then uh yes all right and we leave and uh you li yes I know uh you leave quickly um you make your way upstairs and as you're sort of making your way down the hallway toward the back door um behind you uh, you hear a couple of uh sets of footsteps sort of clicking down the tile and uh, you hear another familiar woman's voice say hey hey hector as you Just hear the going. corner behind you. <laughs> and you take off. Uh, Simon, outside, waiting with the engine running. Everything go, go, go okay? Go, go, go. Oh. Drive, drive, drive. All right, yes, sir. <laughs> Please have one of you, like, do a fucking uh, deuce of hazard on the, <laughs> the, the car and get the fuck in there. Well... <laughs> It's Hanks. either going to be Hector doing it, and the car goes, uh, as it does, <laughs> or it's Hanks, and I imagine that's funny. Hanks would do it. Yes. <laughs> but hit the, the landing is not good. He just kind of, like, flips off on his own. The, the, the slide is, is dope. No, the landing is not. The landing is okay. It's not <laughs> comically bad. He's not, like, caricature science guy. I mean, he is, but... <laughs> 
action scientist. He does shit like this. He does this action. Is action. This is the action. Yeah. Of the action. yeah, this is the action half of my action scientist. All right. So, hood sliding like Bo Duke, you make your way to the <laughs> other side of the car. And then you get in, and then you tell Simon to go, and he, uh, hmm? You're in a 1907 coronet, by the way. I'll send you a picture. It, 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 it looks great. It doesn't run that well, though, so y'all better be careful. <laughs> Hopefully they don't send the cops after us. <laughs> I mean, they're going to go downstairs, and the body's going to be perfectly fine. Like, there's no reason, really. Mm -hmm. All right. So you take off uh, back to Isabel's? Unless Hanks wanted to go somewhere else, but... That's where Simon would sort of default to going, unless you want to go somewhere else. Nope. Uh, okay. I'm good with that. All right. So you... Uh, information and new... I'm going to um, just close Discord completely. But why? Because I don't want to talk about jet boots right now. <laughs> <laughs> Have I not given you enough today? It was more the energy <laughs> of that clip, but <laughs> then I was like, unless. <laughs> okay, we'll talk about it um uh well that's no all... no just the the actual cannon in my arm please very funny uh you know what we'll talk about that too um uh, we gotta gotta get some more action in the action scientist uh the other two of you while all of this has been going on um isabel and victoria you are drinking sangria <laughs> Talking about Victoria being able to read her boyfriend's mind. She got and... grilled on that one hardcore. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Standing up barbecue. Yes. Uh, well, I mean, she just, she called, she called a, a band player that she knows rather well. It's just like, Wendy, we have, we have a, a code blue here. I need something for tomorrow, if possible. Um, just, you know, abandoned to the world nothing too fancy uh we'll do the full beer and wine package though if you don't mind um and just get the whole thing going okay. you have that conversation with her you just get at one point now you you know miss winton with such short notice we're gonna have a, a premium charge have i ever minded I, you know all oh, right then ask. yes ma'am <laughs> He gets about setting everything up. Um, anything else you all want to get up to? Uh, we discussed her next romance novel. <laughs> yes. Just it's 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 very difficult to, to one break into something uh, a little bit different. I'm, mm. I'm very much known for my more my period pieces, um, but then to really just break the genre with the supernatural, and then to break it even more with some sort of like murder mystery vibe that I'm getting with this. I don't know. It might just be a little too sloppy, a little too much all at once. So, mm -hmm. and then she just wanders <laughs> off to her uh, office for a while to do some writing. Victoria goes to take some pictures, sets up her camera with a timer. Okay. You get a lot done, both of you, this afternoon, as uh, <laughs> pertaining to the case. Eh, but you get a lot done. Uh, as soon, Hector and uh, and Professor, Dr. Professor, Action Scientist Hinks return. Uh, Simon in tow. Um, Simon parks the car. And uh, you make your way inside. Information and evidence in hand. Um, and I think that's a good place for us to go ahead and take a break. Well done. Good crime, as always. Uh, our cats are just sitting in the hallway screaming. They're just screaming. Um, so we are going to uh, go ahead and take a quick break, um, refresh ourselves and see what the fuck these cats possibly want uh stick around with us thank you so much for doing so so far and we will be back very shortly to see what happens next and 
welcome back, Internet. Thank you for hanging out with us during our break. Uh, we are going to jump back in where we left off. Uh, so everyone has returned. Uh, the four hunters are back together again at Miss Winton's home uh, to discuss their next plan of action. What would you all like to do? Well, what'd you find out? So we... Uh, no, that's the wrong voice. So uh, we looked at the uh, the body uh, inside and outside and we found a flower inside and outside. What kind of flower? A uh, carnation. Carnation. What color? Well, the one inside was red because that was the color of his heart. It's the same no more. Um, <laughs> it, well, it it was somewhat, um, I suppose branded is the best way to put it. It was branded on his heart. Well, even I know that's just too on the nose. Mm. All right. Well, I, what about the one on the outside? What was the one on the outside's color? Uh, it was like a... It was wilted. I just don't remember if we established was, uh, a color. Mauve or mauve. Mauve. Whatever color you all would refer to that as. I'm referring to it as mauve. Uh, let's look at it. Hang on. Man brain activate. <laughs> Uh, it was purple. <laughs> Perfect. Oh. Actually, we probably we physically we, have the. What am we I have it. Saying? It's, it's yeah, right here. I would literally, I would literally hand them the flower. Forgot that we actually have it. Ms. Winton, it's mauve. Oh. Mauve, mauve. But does anyone in the neighborhood plant? a carnation of this particular color would miss Winton no. Uh there there are a couple of houses that you know would have carnation uh carnation plants around. Um none in this particular color. Um it's not an actually super popular or easy color to get. Um most of them are sort of a bright pink or a white. Hmm. Well that's certainly interesting. We can look into a critter that uses something like this. You said branded literally into his heart. That's the best way I would put it. Um, Hector, may I see the pictures? Oh, yes, I took photos. Oh, good lord. Mm. Maybe oh. I shouldn't have had that last glass of sangria. Oh, all right. Yes, that's. Well branded. Woof. Well, I guess it's time to do some research. She pulls out her phone. Checks Instagram. You do know that I have an entire library at my disposal. Right, but it's all right. Well, then she goes to the internet. It's all right here, right? May may I peruse? Um, I have an idea of where to start, I think. Yeah, the library. Oh, uh, yes. Well, I suppose. You can't take anything from there. Oh, I swear to God, I will find you. Oh, you no, I, I... Yes, I purely research. I have no desire to keep any. I have several first editions in our collections. And if anything goes missing, I know where to look. Understood. All right, then. Simon! We're going out. I'll take the coronet. You get some sleep, love. All right. And call your mother. All right. Because we're down the hall. There's a yes, ma'am. Dear, dear friend of mine. Okay. So you two seem like you understand research a lot. Right. Yes, we can both read. You know what? think that I'd get a lot more done at 
another place that I don't think I'm allowed to mention. So I'm going to go there um, and and let you know what I find. Uh, let's keep each other in the loop so we're not doing, you know, cross researching. Uh, I'll research the flower. Oh, all right. I guess we'll look into creatures that might be associated with something like this. <laughs> all right. And I'll go work out. Unless you intend to make that a live stream of somewhat, uh, that is not fair, darling. You need to be participating. I don't. It's not really my thing. When you find whatever it is, I can, you can hit it. You can hold the book, and I'll read. How about that? Okay. Equally Are they heavy books. Book. Excellent. So my mom, quiet. Um, I'll meet. I'll meet you back at the. the... <laughs> she like pushes him away from the group. The Haven. Oh, oh, right. The Haven. All right. Uh, lovely to see y'all. Uh, keep in touch. Uh, bye. Uh, Victoria, uh, bye. Victoria is going to uh, walk to the front. Uh, I probably go out the front door and then just vanish. And she's at the Haven. <laughs> Do both Hector and Victoria teleport back to the Haven and then both of them look at each other like... Ah. How? How did you... How did you? I got power from a fey creature. Nephilim. You can just do that? Mm-hmm. Since I was born. Wow. I've had a heck of a try and learn how to control it. It's terrible. I can do it myself very easily, but other people, it's much harder. I don't have that problem. All right. Victoria's just going to get on her phone and do research. She just didn't want to be with the group anymore. Do, do you need me to do something here? Yeah, or? why don't you just look up some... I don't know. What, what do you think you should be looking up? Uh, Creatures that scare someone to death, maybe? Sure, I can do that. Seems like a waste of my time since other two other people are doing that, but sure, I'll do that. Uh, I, I, a quick question for you before mm -hmm. I go. And, um, so you have the psychic powers, right? Just, right. just like mind reading mm -hmm. and nothing like ice related. Why? It was just something that I thought you had based on things that I'd heard in the past. Ice Queen. Uh, yes, it was a nickname that they had for you. I didn't know if that was like a, uh, it was because you had abilities or something. No, it's, no, it's because I've uh, never really been tied down before and I can be quite a bitch. I'm going to go get on the computer up there and great. And yes, I am that flexible. <clears throat> I would like to research, please. <laughs> Everyone researching. I, they Hector's disappeared, really like trying. literally laughed. And so I guess she was just going to turn to the professor. Well, I'm driving. Come on. All right. And now we'll these these books in your library are academically researched accounts or at the very least um theories right we're not talking fiction my dear mr hanks we have one of the best academic libraries in the country i can show you anything you may be looking for you'll find it there all right, well, an endorsement from an actual uh, academic and writer is good enough for me, so. Happy shall we? here. We shall. We 
we shall drive to the library. All right. So you head to, I assume, the university library. Yes. So you arrive outside uh, Ms. Winton's library, Professor. It's a it's a university library. Is it like actually a good library? Yes. I feel like we made it a good library. Yeah. Like, it's a on. good library. She did it's not okay. get her master's degree in library sciences to have it be a shitty library. All right. It's an excellent library. Fair enough. She lets you in the uh, employee entrance. She yells at a couple people, just offhand. And then head to the computer to start looking for stuff. All right. So we're all looking for stuff. Uh, what are, what are you, Hector's kind of looking for stuff. Hector's on Twitter. Um, Hector's like typing like with one hand and then lifting the heaviest weight that is in the like weight room that they have with the other and like half half paying attention to whatever is on the computer while working out. All right. Uh, so let's just roll. We'll just group roll. And we'll see how good everyone does. And we'll see what you all collectively find. And we'll go from there. So 13 for Victoria. 12 for Hanks. Ooh. Hey, I didn't do worse. Okay. Isabel failed. Wow. In her own hey. goddamn library. She's too worried about what the <laughs> she's <sister's> doing. <laughs> she, she spent too much time making sure Hanks isn't stealing her shit. That she doesn't actually get much done. Yes, she, you're entirely too worried about what Professor Hinks is doing. Um, meanwhile, Professor Hinks making a hell of a lot of progress over there. Um, so let us say, Hector, you're not really making an effort. You don't really find that much. And the stuff you do find is so boring. It's just so boring. You don't... It's all... It's sort of all like... You end up... <laughs> Victoria, after you're done with your research, you go back in to see what Hector is doing to see if he's found anything, and he's just watching an old episode of Ghost Hunters <laughs> that he has found on YouTube. What? What are you doing? Research. This isn't real. Of course it's real. No, it's a television show, Hector. But they hunt ghosts. Not real ghosts. So they hunt fake ghosts. I mean, it's the same thing, really. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. They are real ghosts. Just continue okay. doing what you're doing, buddy. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Do you know where the protein powder is? Uh, did you try contacting the feller upstairs? I thought I'd kept one down here. Maybe Heathcliff took it. I'll ask. Oh. When do you normally work out? Whenever I can. I uh, usually get up around five uh, oh. from my morning workout, All right. and uh, and then I try to squeeze in a couple times during the day. Right. Well, if you're ever at the student center, if you ever go to work out at the student center, I'll, you'll probably catch the end of my workout. Okay. Uh, I don't usually work out there anymore. I found it was too distracting. People kept getting in my way. Distracting how? Everyone wanted to take pictures, and it just, it got Must to be. Must be a hard laugh. Well, it was 
difficult to get done what I needed. I had a limited amount of time to work out before my shift started. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, I found out a lot. Good. Did you know you can detect ghosts with EMF? You should probably write that down so we remember it. Oh, I'll do that. I was going to send links to the group. That works, too. You're doing great, buddy. Boy, there is not a lot going on in there, is there? <laughs> as, you're all doing your, <laughs> as you're all doing your research, uh, you keep getting texts from Hector, which are just YouTube links, and it's just different timestamps of different episodes of Ghost Hunters in which they're using different ghost hunting equipment. And then, like, a comment. It's like, I don't understand why they don't just hit the ghost with their divinely enchanted hammers. Wynn gets a text that's just like, you gotta be fucking kidding me with this group. I don't know what... The, I'm I'm done after this. If you're not here, I'm not doing it. <laughs> Isabel's awesome. I don't know what the fuck's going on with everybody else, though. <laughs> All right. So the rest of you find actual stuff. Um, well, Izzy is too uh, much too wrapped up in watching the professor's every move. Um, but Professor Hinks and Victoria both um, are able to uh, to find a couple of things. Um, Victoria, uh, I'm just pro. I'm probably just gonna with the two of you just say here's the information the two of you find um so you've got this flower um that you uh victoria was the only one of you i think that had any real experience with figuring out flowers mean things um so you end up uh doing a little bit of research there um carnations as far as you can tell are often um added to bouquets as symbols of love different kinds of love um based on the different colors um the mauve carnation is uh most often tied to a lust of some sort Or a sexual love. Or attraction. Uh, things like that. Uh, so you jot that down. Um, and you start going through some other things. Um, based on that information as well as um, Professor Hinks. Uh, some of the stuff that you have. You uh, try with uh, the, the things at your disposal to look a little bit more scientifically into it. You have these readings now. Um, it is hard at first to, uh, to parse through the garbage versus the, um, the things that you actually sort of find might be legit. Um, you find a, a couple of other people that have done similar experiments to yours, people who have actually um, been able to either use EMF or sort of modify these devices to get them to give out actual sort of steady readings. Um, and you start to look through um, a, uh, the research of some doctor uh, somewhere who was trying to, uh, before they died, trying to essentially do what you were doing and catalog these different kinds of readings. Um, you find something, though not exact, uh, similar in their work. Um, you can narrow down that it is most definitely a spirit of some kind. Um, they, uh, looking at it, you are you're ruling out any kind of like, uh, like. You're looking at something probably more sentient, essentially. Um, there are there's some stuff you can read about uh, different spirits that are like 
caught in their death loops um, that don't actually sort of interact with the environment around them. It's not anything like that. You're probably looking at something that's a little bit more sentient. Um, you know from what you're reading that things like this are usually capable of, uh, to some degree, interacting with corporeal things around them. Um, some stories going as far as like possession, things like that. Again, you don't know exactly what, um, but it is probably something along those lines. A ghost, a spirit, uh, some sort of incorporeal being with some kind of sentience that is able to interact with others. Um, between the two of you, you also come across a lot of stories. And Victoria, you know, this happens a lot in your research where a lot of the stuff you find is basically lore. It's stuff, it's old stuff, it's stuff that's been written, it's journal entries, it's old uh, horror stories that nobody knows if they're actually true or not. Lots of legends and myths and things like that. Um, but as you go through, um, you both kind of end up in this sort of lore dump and you're both sorting through and uh, you come across this story, uh, Victoria, that you can send to the rest of the group. Um, it is an old, very old uh, legend out of Ecuador. Um, and it is about a, uh, it's, it's really kind of like a, more of a scary story that you would tell, kind of like, almost like a campfire story. Um, that you sort of come across that is uh, an old legend out of Ecuador about uh, these spirits um, that would take the form of mysterious women uh, who would walk the streets alone at midnight um, and they would appear to men who were, uh, who were out alone um, and they would appear as enchanted beauties um, these beautiful women essentially that would appear in the middle of the night um, usually with like a veil covering their face um, the stories all end the same way the lone men would be hypnotized by this beauty they perceived she would lead them to a secluded location uh, and uh, finally stop remove her veil uh, and then her face would turn from beautiful into uh, a horrible hideous undead vision of death and the men would die of fright, and the spirit would collect their soul and move on to the next. Often leaving behind some sort of a token that she had been there. Um, in some, it's a coin, some, it's a handkerchief, and in some, it's a flower. Uh, the ones out of Ecuador often would leave flowers. And it's sort of the closest you get. So you uh, sort of blast this out to the group. Um, and Hanks, as you receive this, uh, as uh, <laughs> Miss Winton is sort of looking over your shoulder, Miss Winton, you kind of scan this. Uh, you've heard this story before. You spent some time in Ecuador. And uh, this legend is extremely popular there. Uh, the legend of La Dama Tapada. You write that down for me? I will. Yes, I'll put it in the chat. Um, da, 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 that is in da, 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 the Spanish. Um, this has taken on many forms since this legend has began. Um, sometimes they are known as the white women. Uh, spirits of lust. We are Lots the versions of this story um but it sounds familiar you've been told this story before why didn't i think of this one before yeah, yes the, the women in white uh the dama tapada very popular sounds like a spirit of oh uh you had mentioned he was potentially cheating yes Oh, he was definitely cheating, my dear. Well, then there you are. I assume that there's some sort of an energy that um, attracts these sort of 
spirits relating to infidelity, and, well, it seems to be our best guess. Hmm. Interesting. I'll look to see if there's a Ghost Hunters episode about it. You do that, sweetheart. Um, do we know... How are these things summoned? If it's from Ecuador... I mean, not necessarily, I guess maybe not necessarily from Ecuador, but like, has anyone died in the area that would have become this? Would we know? Or would Izzy have heard anything in her travels? Uh, in the area, no suspicious deaths recently, except for Ed. Um... I think you would know these sorts of spirits can come from several different origin points. They don't necessarily have to be the ghost of someone who's died. Can be. Can also be uh, a corrupted spirit. Can also be the sort of spiritual form of something from somewhere else. <laughs> And, uh, have any of y'all ever dealt with a spirit before? Not many. A couple. No, uh, but it is where a lot of people in my profession begin their search. Right. Well, how do we, what do we do with it? Do we trap it? We kill it. Usually it depends on the spirit. Usually I just hit it until the thing that it's trying to attack gets away to protect them. But they usually come back. As heroic as that is, I think we might be looking for a more permanent solution to the problem. Hmm. Well, I guess we would need to sort of figure out where it came from. I mean, if it's, if the source is some sort of spurned spirit of some kind, I mean, we need to put that spirit to rest. If it was summoned, we need to find the witch that did it. It's just very odd that it would show up in the middle of my neighborhood. <laughs> Who was the first one that went missing, though? Let's see. What was her name? Uh, you had another neighbor down the street, a little bit further away uh, from where Ed was living, go missing about two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, his name was... Where did he go? On my list. Uh, his name was Donald Young. Hmm. Well, I think at the barber you we could get a better look at. I mean, if it is a witch or someone summoned it, we could get. A, I mean, I could just figure out who did that. Um. But if it shows up at midnight and someone's out and about tonight. They might be uh, caught up, so it might be something we're going to have to... Oh, like a, a patrol of some kind, just making sure it's not... Yeah. Praying on someone this evening. Right. I can help with that. Oh, well, wonderful. Are you sure your lady friend won't mind you staying out so late? Oh, no, I'll just let her know that I'll be home late. Well, the more the merrier. <laughs> we can set up base camp at, at my place of residence, of course. Wonderful. And, uh, Hanks, you can uh, work on some sort of uh, ghost trapping apparatus? Like Ghostbusters. Uh, yes. I believe the... <laughs> I believe the readings I have are sufficient to rig something up um, I'll see what I can do 
All right, but you have to make it look like that thing's from Ghostbusters. Mm. Oh. It's a That's beautiful. a good movie. Oh, it's a delightful film. <laughs> it is a classic. Could we wear coveralls, too? Yes, please do. Well, I guess I'll be doing science. Science. Is science the one you have to roll for? I can never remember. Science is the one where I tell you what I want to do. And you tell me what I need. Um, I want to do the thing. I want to make, I want to make ghost trap. Ghost trap. Okay. Here Demon you trap. go. Thank you. Demon trap did go extraordinarily well last time. Hell yeah, uh, it did. Well, let's try ghost trap. Uh, let's see. The keeper will tell, uh, you tell the keeper what you want the capable of. And the keeper will pick some of these options. Okay. For ghost trap. Hmm. I'd also like to be able to collect ectoplasm. Okay. For ghost trap and evidence collection. Uh, let's see. I'm going to say it's going to require an enormous amount of power. Because hmm. that seems like Ghostbusters. Um... It'll require an enormous amount of power. Uh, it won't be very reliable. I wouldn't have it any other way. Meaning I'm going to make you roll to use it. Alrighty. And you need some help building it. Oh boy. Hmm. You look perplexed, Professor. Your estate, uh... Yeah, yeah. It's on its own power grid, yes? Oh, of course. Outside of the city. Yes, I have two backup generators as well. Why? Fantastic. I am going to need all of that. Excuse me? Can you get me access to the power grid? Of, of course. Um... I'm sorry, when you say you will need all of my power supplies. Ghosts, uh, as I understand them, and obviously I will have a better understanding at the end of all of this. Um, well, they exist in a sort of in-between planar state. And in order to trap it... Um, my grid and both of my generators could power this city for several days, and you need... All of them. Well, yes, to be safe, I, I typically overshoot rather than undershoot these things. I see. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I need to pull something from another plane without opening a rift. It's got to be powerful. It's got to be precise. And things are going to have to get a little bit hinky. I do see what you did there. Uh, she, while he was speaking, she actually took out her little notebook and was like writing down a little bit of dialogue until you got to Hinky and then it just completely turned her off and she closed the book. Um, well, all right. Um, I don't see why not. Um, however, if you completely blow out all power supply to my home, um, you will be um, paying for the caterers because uh, we did have to fit in some of the uh, amuse bouche into uh, my refrigerator. So that's on you. A risk I will have to take. Proceed, Professor. Excellent. Um... She'll put you in her car garage she has several it doesn't look like most of them get driven very often though it's really just the coronet who do you have somebody that services these vehicles on hand 
Simon tinkers around sometimes, but if I ever need someone in particular, I'll hire them out on, on site. Why? Is the lad around? Simon! You here, love? Uh, after a moment, Simon comes, like, hustling around the corner. Uh, yes, yes, ma'am. Did you have a day to anything this evening, love? I don't want to take you away from your personal life, but if you're home, um, do you mind putting in a little extra work? I'll pay extra. Uh, uh, yeah, sure, sure, yeah, no problem. Simon, this is Mr. Hanks. Professor Hanks. Professor. Uh, uh, we met. Mm. Yes. Earlier. Um, he has a bit of tinkering he'd like to do around here. Um, if you don't mind assisting him. Uh, on on what? Well, it's not unlike a car, except it's entirely different than a car. I I, I can give you the I could point you in the right direction. I just need a set of extra hands. I can do that. Fantastic. <laughs> She'll just kind of walk out. Well, I'll leave you both to it. And she'll pat Simon on the shoulder and just lean into his ear. Do not let him near the rolls or it's coming out of your behind. All right, goodbye. He looks terrified. Okay. I want to build a thingy. All right, you set to work building a thingy. Tell me about this thing. Oh, man. I Tell thought I had more building. time. <laughs> Would you like more time? I, I can explain it all on the reveal. All right. Uh, I need then. time to cook this madness up. Cook it up. All uh, right. All right. So uh, Hinks and Simon head into the garage to build a thing. Uh, the rest of you, while this is happening... What you want to get up to? Um, Victoria will ask Hector. Uh, uh, so you faced um, you faced spirits and ghosts before, right? Yes, I think so. All right. What can be used against them? Like salt, holy water. Psh, summons hammer. Oh, for those of us who don't have a hammer like that? I don't know. I usually just use this. There. It sort of just works on everything. Can Isabel have run into at least some <laughs> incorporeal things in her minor travels? Yeah, you all have at least a basic understanding. Um, salt and iron usually come up. Mm -hmm. Holy water, is that a thing? No. Um, Text when... Babe, I'm going to borrow your iron knife. I think I know where it is. Which one? <laughs> Which one is the question? <laughs> There's a yeah. basement full <laughs> of <laughs> pointy things now. Um, and some salt. Hope you're having a good day, kissy face. You would know there's like, there are iron knives in like several drawers in the kitchen and in the like it's the knives overflowed very quickly into the rest yes. of the house uh i will uh, uh outfit the group um and uh hector we're gonna be at the street tonight um is there any way you can like dress incognito Like wear a hood. Oh, like dress so I don't stand out. Right. I thought the idea was if we were gonna trick anything to come out, they'd be looking for a handsome young man on the prowl. Are we? Do you think that we are ready to trap this thing? Is Professor Hanks good? He better be for all the power he's using on my house. You, you are gonna be helping me pay for the electricity bill. This, 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 Hanks. I have no idea. The uh, text tanks. Are you gonna be ready by tonight? Um, a single yes. 
Well then, Hector, how do you feel about being bait? Love it. All right. Now, you... Well, do we think that this thing is only going after people who are, like, in the mindset of cheating? So don't know. I mean, I mean, it wouldn't hurt. Uh, so whoever we send out there should be thinking about well <laughs> is that the idea well i could I mean, just talk about it very loudly or something and just try to make a big show of it i don't think i can like actually i'm not really planning on or thinking right. about that what exactly would you be yelling out into my neighborhood in the middle of the night precisely hmm You walked right into it. We're just saying, <laughs> I don't know. I could uh, pretend to make a very loud phone conversation. Uh, oh. Getting in uh, an argument with my significant other. Right. Of course. You know, if I could just put in your brain those things, those thoughts and feelings, it might be easier. Would that hurt? No. They wouldn't stick around, though, afterwards. They, yeah. No, no, I'm not that powerful. Okay. okay. And you think... So you think this ghost can read minds? Well, it's a ghost, so I, I, I don't think it just listens to people's conversations. Well, why not? Uh, looks at Isabel like am i cra am i crazy here <laughs> i think uh, i understand where you're going with this I, I, whatever this creature may be uh, it seems to be sort of focused on intent uh, rather than outwardly parents but I mean, does anything in the lore say that this ghost can read minds not necessarily it seems however that the the, the Dharma department is more drawn to those that, uh, you know, may be questioning their life partners, that's all. I mean, if you're not comfortable with it, obviously we don't have to do it. I mean, as long as it didn't, as long as it was temporary. We could try. That's fine i mean if if that's what it takes and if the empanada or whatever can read my mind then la dama to parda it but... means the covered lady the, the whole vile situation um, yes to be perfectly frank um honestly it, it, some of what I used to hear was, you know, the uh, the bartenders out and about in Ecuador more chastising young man to get back home after uh, a night of revelry because, well, <laughs> you shouldn't be out and about and, well, randy, <laughs> lest the, the dominant part of come and get you, you know what I mean. Do you... No, okay, I think that's a line that I don't want to cross. I'm not going to make Hector Randy. I don't think you necessarily need to be involved in that one, but, you know, maybe Hector can peruse those thoughts on his own when we are not there. So, um... Just thoughts. Just we'll Victoria, moment. she loses her shit and she, has, she just, like, puts her hand around and then walks out of the room. <laughs> she must really be scared about this. It's a very terrifying prospect. Um, well, why don't you go ahead and get ready, and um, we shall uh, prepare for backup. Um, I have plenty of salts around here, and, well, if anything, that and iron there from the fireplace is made of iron, so that should work nicely. I have so many knives. <laughs> <laughs> She also has several knives. Uh, I, I won't question that, but all right. <laughs> Great. So I just walk around thinking 
about sex. Well, not to put too fine a point on it, but yes, actually. So it should be a rather entertaining evening for you at the very least. Okay. Again, I'll emphasize I grew up in a brothel, so I, this is, we don't have to beat around the bush, so to speak. Oh, <laughs> lovely. Um, yes, just think as many sexual thoughts as you possibly can, and uh, just, you know, do a couple laps around the neighborhood, and I think you should be fine. Okay, so I should run around the neighborhood then. Not run, no. Uh, more oh. meander. Just wander around. Oh, all right. Do we have a plan? <laughs> I think we do. All right. Well, uh, Miss Victoria, you and I shall bring our salt and several iron implements, mm -hmm. as it were. And uh, have to you go, go do your thing. <laughs> At midnight. At midnight. Right. What time mm -hmm. is it? We'll assume it's later, I'm guessing. <laughs> we didn't have this later. whole conversation and have to wait <laughs> like, like six four hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <once. laughs> like one in the afternoon. <laughs> After just stands outside waiting for the next 11 hours. No, 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 no. no. It is later uh, as you're giving <sighs> Professor Hinks as much time as possible to build his science contraption. Cool. Uh, Morrison Grias had, uh, she'll turn on a movie. She'll turn on like old school Ghostbusters. There you go, just to yeah. get in the spirit. She'll pop some popcorn, put it out in the home theater. It's like an entire wall is the scream. She's got the comfy seats, you know, that recline back. It's great. I'm never going back to Abby's again. We don't even get to go in the house. Who's Abby? I'm sorry. Uh, one of the other hunters we've been uh, hanging out with, working oh, with. Is she? Oh, Abigail! Of course, of course! And right, she yeah. let you stay at her house? No. Oh. It's a long story, not my story to tell. Um, of course, darling. Now, well, you're welcome to come on by any time, really. Again, I sometimes even forget that Simon's here, so. <laughs> well, I will take you up on that offer. I think that we could have a very, uh, very mutual friendship with uh, your uh, love of uh, all things gossip and my ability to get whatever sort of information you want. Now, about that, um, so... You know, I do have several very healthy relationships uh, with uh, certain consultants, if you will. So um, I thought maybe we may discuss that on a more, I don't know, um, more permanent basis. Well, I mean, I'm not starting school for a few months, so I mean, I'll be down. You thinking um, of a part of full time capacity? Well, let's work that out later, when I know exactly what you're talking about. Oh well, and she, like out of out of her like notebook, she like pulls out a fucking like business proposition. She's got everything <laughs> for you. She's ready to go. Now this is my normal fee, and she'll just go through the whole thing with you. Eyes go a little wide. Oh, <laughs> well, his thought here is about the NDA situation, and yeah, and stuff. <laughs> we will have to discuss that later, ma'am. As you talk business, and watch Ghostbusters, and Hector does whatever Hector is doing. Are you watching Ghostbusters? At the very least, definitely. Okay. At, yeah. at some point, Hinks would have requested Hector's uh, muscles. Right. Most people do at some point. Yeah, yeah. It comes to an end, and uh, Hector, you are requested in the garage. Hector walks out of the garage to see whatever <laughs> has been wrought. I need something moved to the street near where we plan to bait this ghost. Okay, what would that be? He looks to the left and there's something covered in a sheet and there's like a little bit of paint like on the garage floor. I 
admittedly would like this to be a dramatic reveal. So I cannot tell you. Okay. Is there any danger of me... If I just grab it and lift it, is it going to break? Um... No, just put it down gently. I'd like to not destroy the suspension too much. Okay. It, is there a side that I should grab this, for, approach it from to be Pro safe? Probably. Hmm. From the front have here, you ever from lifted, behind. Have you ever lifted a car? Uh, not all of a car. Okay, I'm going to need you to lift all of a car. I can try. Okay. <clears throat> Hector will try to lift whatever this thing is. Lifting with the knees. Can you lift a whole car? There's only one way to find out. Let's go ahead and roll. Okay. Tough, look to see probably. If I've got anything that would help with this, but I don't see unless this thing is evil. Um, nope. Not okay. an evil car. <laughs> okay, as long as it's not an evil car. Uh, all right, rolling tough. Uh, not a great roll. Uh, nine. Okay. All right. Uh, it's gonna take a bit. It's gonna take some struggling take you a little bit of time it is not graceful and as you set it down you do hear the suspension creak pings probably a little more than you would like uh but you do it you weren't kidding finally setting it down the girls sip sangria from the doorway. How much sangria have you guys had? A lot. <laughs> She's just remaking it. It's the white Weinstein Kriya too, so there's not as many tannins. She's older. She knows what to do. Mm, you're gonna have that sugar hangover though. Mm. Hector, okay. after he gets is like really sweaty, so like takes his shirt off to like Hector is cool very, like I don't know that any of you have ever seen him this sweaty. Hinks you've spent the most time with him, so the girls cheers. <laughs> Isabel, can I get a towel? Why on earth do you oh tell him you don't own any towels, please. Ah <clears throat> um in the bathroom, darling. The door down the hall. Hmm. There's a hose out back if you just want to do a quick. Is there something wrong with your shower? Say yes. Not at all, darling. If you need to do a full rinse, <clears throat> rinse down, um, that would be fun. Okay. I think I'll use your shower for a moment. Uh, just point me in the right direction. Of course, the third door down the hallway. Hmm. Hector goes goes down the hall to rinse off. Looking respectfully. I don't even know about that, darling. Um. <laughs> yeah, is that the word that you want to use? <laughs> is that the uh, word for whatever this is? <laughs> I have Y'all a boyfriend. I have Jesus. a boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> This was not um, what I expected to be doing on a Wednesday evening, but, um, well, hunting, am I right? <laughs> Ooh, Ghostbusters 2, Ghostbusters 2. Hector, you take a shower. Mm -hmm. Very refreshing. Mm -hmm. And uh, you come back. And Hinks, I suppose, is ready for his big reveal. <laughs> All right. What is this thing? So we're we're in the street 
and um, there is a what what looks to be some sort of a vehicle underneath a tarp, and just a lot of cables running from I don't know the the nearest place he could jack into the power grid, and um, matter of fact, th- I guess throughout the entire neighborhood, there are certain points where he's pulling power from. <laughs> And, um, well, I did my best to make it as compact as possible. Realized I needed a decent amount of, um, well, I may have borrowed one of the vehicles. Um, Simon assured me nothing sentimental, so not your father's car. Um, (sighs) nothing on the expensive end. I shot for, um... Uh, something that needed a little bit of work uh and stares daggers at simon if it was anything but that nissan you are dead man would he have known that it was the nissan i think he would have known it was the nissan it's the nissan then yeah continue He's the only one that works on these cars. I think he would have said, just use the Nissan. <laughs> Please, I'm begging you, sir. Hinks unveils um, what looks to be some sort of a strange hybrid between what was once a car and essentially a large version of the ghost trap with little, looks like ray guns pointed where the antennas should be. Um the antennas function very similar to the proton packs from Ghostbusters and will shoot uh, arced lightning, essentially, that targets the spirit and reconfigures its vibrational frequency to be that of our plane of existence. Um, the car battery has been modified to transmit this spiritual energy and... Uh, essentially fractionalize it between a holding unit in the trunk and he kind of proudly presents a very crudely painted trunk of the Nissan that has got yellow and black paint across it. Oh! Good job, Professor Hanks. And a containment unit for the ectoplasm I need for my experiments. Uh, I took the coolant uh, receptacle out, so that one will need to be replaced. I'm sorry. I tried to do as little damage as I could with as much as I had, um, but unfortunately, the entire chassis of the vehicle was needed. I see. So you used a car, but you couldn't put wheels on it. That was my question. Um, no, there are wheels. I just didn't want to steer the vehicle for fear that... um. There were a lot of wires. Uh, Yeah, I didn't want things to get tangled. No, Um, I think it worked out just fine, Professor. I think that's fine. Great. I can write this off. I can write this off. It's research. All right, I can write this all off. All right. Um, Lovely. What time is it? Uh, it's getting late. Let's say it's 10.30. Why don't we go one more time over our um, plans, and uh, then we'll just shoo old Mr. Hecht out there and see what happens. Right. So Hector is going to go out and um, think some thoughts and then um about sex about sex correct right now oh for the i see yes and then we are going to trail him as best we can and uh he if the spirit uh takes him then we will uh (laughs) get him back sorry Serious space must continue. That's it. That's all the plan. Oh, wonderful. All right. What could possibly go wrong? 
<laughs> That's why I was the, wondering why we're doing this so early, but it's working out. It's going to be fun. The IAE may not be as calibrated to the spiritual's frequency since this is the first time I'm doing it. Oh, sorry. It's uh, Izzy's automotive ecto trap. Oh, and that. who's? And they... You named it after me. Well, of course. You supplied all but all of the technology I used here. How thoughtful of you. Hmm. I realized that maybe I should have asked permission about halfway through ripping the battery out of... I don't need to know any further. Okay. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. The thought is appreciated. But please, next time, if you decide to um, retrofit one of my vehicles, please let me know first. <laughs> of course, I, I would have done my Winnebago, but that is currently supplying power for a portal to hell. It's not important. Right. Oh. That portal is still open? Slightly. Abby's watching it. It's fine. She's familiar with re what reading spell certain doom. Um, Victoria is going to quickly text when uh, a text of panic. <laughs> but uh, that's, yeah, just like, hey, just so you know, <laughs> this is still going on. You might want to talk to Abby. Um, Wynn's probably like, yeah, I'm tracking down a demon that got out of it like two hours ago. That's <laughs> the whole job that I'm on. Where don't, you been? don't say that. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Anyways. Will Hanks be my first hunter that dies because my friends kill him? <laughs> Tune in to find out. It was never going to be Travis. He's a sweet, sweet boy. Really? Right. It might have been Travis if he had been there when Wynn got back about all the shape shifting. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> true. Okay, so plan in place: ghost busting car set up. Uh, they finish the tail end of Ghostbusters two because they have time. Ghostbusters two, you got time. Uh, you finish Ghostbusters 2, and you set out to try to find a ghost. Uh, so Hector is going out into the road. The sidewalk. The sidewalk. Just going out into the neighborhood and thinking dirty thoughts. <laughs> Are you... You're doing laps around the neighborhood. Just casually walking. I think Hector thought his phone call idea was a good one. So I think also does that bit as well. Okay. Now, do you actually call anyone? No. Or you just do a fake? I do a fake phone call. Okay. I want to hear a little bit of this fake phone call. Then. <laughs> it's just <coughs> uh, something along the lines of... Well, I told you we had gone to the club the other night, and yes, uh, no. I, yes, that did happen, but I, I promise she she meant nothing to me. And, <laughs> and stuff like that. Stuff that, like, Hector has heard other people saying, and to it is just... It's, Hector's never cheated on anybody. He's a sweet boy. Okay, and as you're walking down the sidewalk having this fake phone conversation mm -hmm. with no one the rest of you are <laughs> following 20 feet behind with a I was gonna say like coming to a wider lap like you know we let him go and, and then we kind of make our way around like him like down side streets like keep keep visual but be further away now, I'm does hiding car... in the driver's seat. <laughs> does it move? Nope. Does it, it doesn't it, move. It is, it is there stationary. for when we... It is like a gun pointed at a position that the okay. ghost will presumably be at. <laughs> like a ghost turret. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. So Hanks I'm, is in I'm the driver's seat. In there. Ready 
to spring his trap. It's like, it's like the hopefully Ant-Man not get caught in his own van. trap. <laughs> that, that's where we're that's what that's what okay. i'm going with yeah that's lovely okay so hank's in the driver's seat ready to spring the ghost trap um isabel and victoria couple Anyone? iron knives like i i imagine just isabel has like a flashlight some salt in her purse like just a big container of salt and then like she just has her her like and iron from her fireplace like over her shoulder and it's just like, all right, well, I've walked around with stranger things in this neighborhood before, so here we are. You want to watch some of my cheer videos while we're walking? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> all right. Uh, so, Hector walking around, the other two of you uh, skirting, but trying your best to keep an eye. Um, Hank's ready to spring the trap um hector you walk around you do your fake phone call bit for a while um midnight comes and goes and uh it's very quiet out here in the road uh for a while um watching cheer videos on victoria's phone you sort of walk uh you all get bored <laughs> It's pretty boring. Um, and as your focus starts to slip a little bit, um, Hector, you see something sort of as you give up, sort of put your phone away um, back into its dimension where it lives with all of your other things. Um, out of the corner of your eye, uh, sort of coming from the direction of the front of the neighborhood, like where the gate would be, uh, you see somebody walking up the street toward you um smaller frame like a young woman um hard to see in the uh in the dark until she makes her way sort of under one of the street lights and uh you see a familiar face as uh, you're carrying a bag and waving at you you hear hector Where have you been? I've been trying to call you, like, all day. Sabrina? Yeah, dummy. What are, you, what are you doing here? Like I said, I've been trying to call you all day. We were supposed to have dinner. I didn't... I told you I was going to be out late. We're on a job right now. It's, it's dangerous here. You shouldn't be here. I guess I forgot. Sorry? Okay, well, I, I need to, I need to get you back. I need to get you out of here before this thing shows up. Fine. I guess we can have dinner tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, tomorrow's fine. Um, come on. Um, I guess you can meet everyone then. Uh, and like goes to take her hand to lead her back to the group. Okay. Uh, you take her hand, and you start to lead her back to the group. Uh, and as you touch her hand, uh, your hand goes cold. And as you hesitate, she looks up at you. What? Who are you? You don't want to come with me? Hector summons his hammer. Uh, as you go to summon your hammer, um, she reaches up and uh, sort of grabs your wrist with her other hand, kind of phasing through you just a little bit. You go cold, and she holds you there uh, and just says, I don't think so. And uh, as you feel this sort of cold take over your body, you see her face start to change uh, and her cheeks sort of sink in and she starts to look uh, skeletal and horrifying. 
and her form phases into yours. And you feel cold. And everything around you starts to swim and sort of go dark. What do we see? What eyes! What did we see? <laughs> Certainly have eyes. <laughs> uh, you saw Hector from down the street uh, walk up to what looks like a young woman, uh, talk to her for a moment, um, take her hand, and then just kind of stop reach up very briefly and then just kind of freeze there in place he's much bigger than her and you can't see her in front of him that might be a problem right uh victoria's going to start to run in his direction oh oh you start to run in uh, in his direction, the two of you, and yeah. you get to Hector, and uh, he is stands there for a moment, just kind of frozen in place, and then uh, puts his arms down, and turns around and looks at you, and smiles. And that is where we're going to go ahead and end our session for today. I done got possessed. No! I can't decide whether I'm the worst person to get possessed or not. Or the best! <laughs> We're gonna find Oh out. no! How dare you use <laughs> Hector's sweet girlfriend against him. Oh no! Monster. Oh, of the week. Feelings? Yes. And Hector, you came to me in my my monster hunting game <laughs> and said, "Can Hector have a serious girlfriend?" <laughs> that he doesn't want to get involved in the monster hunting. And I said yes. <laughs> And you involved her. Technically, monster. she didn't. Savannah Technically is the monster. There. Savannah <laughs> is the monster of the week. <laughs> is that going to be the moral at the end of this? That Savannah was the monster, was the monster of the week? The whole time. Monster of the week the entire time. The real monster Just is the friends we made along the way. <laughs> For your purposes, Sabrina's fine. Yeah, I know. Sabrina's not here. Hector's a big dum dum and didn't think about that. And that's why when you all decided to use him as bait, I went, Yay! <laughs> and so that is where we're going to end our session for today. Mom. With me traumatizing someone that's not Rob. Hey, hey look at that. that! Oh boy, we're back to traumatizing me again. Little, little victories, little victories, man. I take them where I can get them. It's uh, it's Val's turn again. We've come all the way back around, and it's your turn to be traumatized. Just a little trauma as a treat. Um, yeah. as we'll fine. find out uh, next week what happens there. Uh, before we say goodbye at the end of the session. I can't ever get this freaking hand out to pull up. The keeper will ask the following questions. Did we conclude the current mystery? Hell no. No, no ma'am. Uh, did we save someone from certain death or worse? I the opposite. To be yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nah. Whoops. Uh, well, did we save uh, uh, the coroner's assistant, uh, Grace? Uh, honestly, you kind firing? of did. I mean, she saved her saved her job. Losing you her did job. save her job. Uh, but we did put her in that situation. I think we've talked about we can't put someone in I danger did. and then save them from that danger. I'm gonna do you know what? I'll call this one I'll call this one yes, I think because of the above and beyond and the use of a resource that you can't get back. Oh yeah. To save her. 
that's fair. I did use a luck point. Yeah, you can I'll call that like a an exception. Cause you won't you won't get those luck points back. Mm -hmm. Those are a non renewable resource. Oh, okay. You saved your livelihood. It's fine. Uh, did we learn something new and important about the world? Yeah. Ghosts. Ghosts. La Dama Tapada. We're back to ghosts. La Which is a real story, Dama by the way. La Anyone's interested? Y'all are horny La Dama Tapada. <laughs> you covered that lady. <laughs> you gave us this Adonis, and you're like, oh, he takes his shirt off. He's all sweaty. I just go. What, yeah. your, your shower don't, doesn't work? I'm gonna go take a shower. Don't victim blame. Y'all were horny <laughs> when we got here. Don't even fucking go there. All right, fair, fair. I got your back, friend. Thank you, Rob. This is very fair. And a marker that just says, y'all were horny when we got here. <laughs> horny uh, from the bottom, now we hear. <laughs> Did you learn something important about one of the hunters? Several, several yeah. things. Mm -hmm. A lot of things, I would say. Oh, you had you did an icebreaker. Ooh, yeah. Like everybody. Yeah. What are everybody's favorite color? I'm gonna get bonus XP for the icebreaker because that was nice. So two XP yeah. for everybody. Yeah. Uh, bonus My first question. Level up. That'll bump you to four. So two XP for everybody. Oh, I just I'm put that on my generous. arm track. That didn't make sense. I'm gonna do that. And I. <laughs> Because I did take advantage of Hector bringing up his girlfriend and then specifically saying he didn't want to get her involved. Bonus question. So yeah, 2 XP for everyone. Yay. And don't Woo. forget about those XP if you failed a roll, which I think Isabel was the only one that did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not that we roll that much. All right, so mark those XP. Um, you leveled up we'll talk about those in the meantime uh thank you so much everybody for hanging out with us today and watching our show um it was nice to be back after we were gone last week so thanks for hanging out uh in the meantime here on ggk we have a bunch of stuff going on um our next scheduled uh live stream will be on tuesday at seven o'clock eastern time seven o'clock p.m eastern time that'll be a tabletop tuesdays so we're playing masks um, and several of us will be there. Um, our good friend Alex runs it. Um, we should be getting up to teenage angst and shenanigans. And uh, got a lot of other fun stuff this week. Wild Space on Thursday. Um, the premiere episode of season two of Neon Souls on Friday. Um, we had our session zero and setup and character building this past Friday. And that was really, really fun. So that will be up on our YouTube shortly if you want to get in on the ground floor of season two. Same characters, new setting, a uh, new system. We're playing Cypher, which is going to be uh, real, real fun. Um, and then Star Power on Saturday. And we'll be back on Sunday uh, for, for to see what happens to Hector and the rest of the group. Uh, same time, same place. Uh, any last words? Anything y'all want to plug before we leave? Okay. I just want to sing teenage angsty superheroes, teenage angst. And I'm done. That's all. That's all I needed. I'm, all I'm good. Right. Uh, well, we'll Welcome to my room, mom. You don't understand. <laughs> Sorry. Go on. Uh, no, you're great. We will be back one week from today. But until next time, good game and good night, internet. <laughs>